These three stories of interesting and significant discoveries found by everyday people will have you starting to pay just a little more attention to your surroundings and what potential valuables could be hiding around you at any time. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three unexpected discoveries. Anthony Doolin Finds Gold Mine Homeowner Anthony Doolin had already owned his property for over three years when it offered him the surprise of a lifetime. He'd purchased the home in Australia for $1.35 million, but he didn't know that it was secretly worth a lot more until he discovered a gold mine in his back garden. The property included 16.5 hectares of land, so it's not unusual it would take so long to fully explore the area. When he finally stumbled into the mine, it felt like a movie moment. In describing his experience shortly after the find, Doolin stated, I nearly fell over, I just couldn't believe it. There was a lot of mining at the turn of the century, and in those hills, there are quite the few little mines. It's about six metres and still intact. As he stated, the mine uncovered by Doolin was not the only mine on the property. But for some inexplicable reason, Doolin didn't further explore the mines. Shortly after the discovery, despite his continued lack of investigation into the mines, his mother Jane sold the property on his behalf. While the pair asked for $1.65 million, no one seemed willing to cough up the price. Ultimately, Doolin settled for the same price he'd initially paid for the property. Hopefully the new owners were able to find some more surprises of their own. The Thornbury Hoard For Ken Allen, a little digging was all it took for him to come into a considerable amount of wealth. This wealth came from what is now known as the Thornbury Hoard. Hoard referring to a secret stock of valuables. Allen discovered the Thornbury Hoard in March 2004 while living in Thornbury in England. He was digging a pond in his back garden. Suddenly, the surface of a grainy, decorated, greyware pot came into his view. Inside the pot, which measured 16 to 20 inches in height, were 11,600 copper alloy Roman coins. This hoard is thought to be the third largest of its kind found in Great Britain. Allen quickly reported his find, taking the valuables to the Bristol City Museum and Art Gallery. There, the treasure was weighed at 63 pounds. It took multiple people to lift the bucket it was collected in. After drying and chemically treating them, most of the coins were easily identified. The majority of the hoard consisted of the Roman coins, radiates and numis, specifically 11,449 of the latter and 11 of the former. Radiates are named for the depiction of the radiate crown, also known as the solar crown. This symbolises the sun and the powers associated with it. Numus is Latin for coin, and these coins tended to have low value at the time of their use. Coins are dated in many ways, including by observations of who is depicted on the coin and the style of the letters. Some coins are easier to date than others, especially when damage is considered. In this case, experts were largely successful in dating the hoard. They were able to date the earliest coins back to the reign in 260. The latest date back to the Constantinian dynasty in 348. Most of them, however, were from the 330s. Coins from the hoard from this era had three different reverse types, which refers to the back face of the coin. The backs were marked with the phrase Gloria Exocitus, which means to the glory of the army. The designs were either of two soldiers or the Roman capitals. Other coins were designed to commemorate battles which was fought between Constantine I and Licinius. The battle was ultimately won by Constantine, who became the sole emperor of Rome. These coins depict Victoria, the goddess of victory, standing on the bow of a ship. Despite the pot coming out of the ground significantly damaged, it was identified as having origin in Monmouthshire. Following the hoard's assessment by evaluation committee, it was valued at £40,000. Through funding by the Heritage Lottery Fund, the Headley Museum Treasure Acquisition Scheme and others, 
the Bristol City Museum and Art Gallery were able to acquire and exhibit the hoard. The value and size of the hoard is comparable to a few others, such as the Nether Compton board and the Bishopswood coins. The Nether Compton hoard consisted of 22,670 coins and was found in 1989. The Bishopswood hoard was found in 1895 and consisted of 17,548 coins. French couple ordered to return gold found in garden. The extreme excitement and subsequent disappointment of finding a fortune and then having to return it to somebody else is hard to imagine, but for one French couple, it became their reality. After discovering a cache of gold ingots in the garden of their home, the 800,000 euro value of their treasure was ordered back to the previous owners of the property. The couple bought the home in 2002, but didn't discover the gold until 2009, where they found six ingots. In 2013, they found another 22. The findings were accidental, and the couple was sure to legally declare their discovery to the police, the mayor's office, and the Bank of France. They ended up selling 23 of the 28 ingots. The sale of the bars ultimately caught the attention of Trackfin, a French anti-money laundering agency. The agency swiftly contacted the former residents of the house and alerted them to the discovery. This included a widow and her eight children, as the father had recently passed away. The family had originally inherited the house from the father's parents. The widow is quick to sue the couple for both damages and compensation. She claimed that as the former property owners, the gold still rightfully belonged to her family. The claims of the previous owner weren't entirely baseless. She explained the gold originally belonged to the parents of her deceased husband. Her husband had only found two of the bars before they sold the house in 2002. Luckily, she was able to produce a purchase certificate proving ownership of the unrecovered gold bars. She argued the discovered bars were hers by right of succession. In defence of the couple, their lawyer stated, Everyone has told them that the ingots were theirs. In good faith, they considered themselves the owners of the gold. They were, after all, in alignment with a rule that exists in most countries, stating that any treasure of archaeological value must be reported to authorities. But since the widow was able to display sufficient proof of ownership to the gold to the court in 2015, the couple who found the treasure were court ordered to return the money made from the sale of the 15 gold ingots as well as the remaining gold. Following this ruling, one of the judges explained, He who discovers by pure chance something hidden or buried, is necessarily aware at the moment of discovery that he is not the owner of that item. The order was confirmed by the Court of Appeals in 2017. Ultimately, this was upheld by a Supreme Court decision on June 6, 2018. If you think this decision sounds a bit unfair, you're not alone. It turns out that determining ownership for treasure found on a property is fairly complicated, Typically, valuables found on a property are shared between the finder and the owner. If the finder is the owner of the property, they have claimed the whole hoard. That is, however, unless the previous owners didn't explicitly relinquish their ownership. Since the house's sellers had proof of ownership, the rule stated the treasure should be returned to the rightful owners. The situation would have been different if the coins were discovered from ancient Roman civilizations. This would be opposed to any personal collection, because it would be assumed the original coin owners were long dead. This was the case of Thornbury Hoard we mentioned earlier. As the lawyer explained, Here, the sellers of the house were able to prove the gold belonged to them. It would have been different if my clients had discovered precious old coins. For example, as it would have been difficult to discover their first owners. That is what we would call a loss of memory ownership. Treasure ownership is even further complicated if you find it in a typical storage place, such as an attic. The previous owners can claim their ownership is assumed. Take this story as a warning to not claim any found treasure too hastily. In fact, in some countries like Australia, it's the law that you can't keep any valuables found on a property, even if you purchase the land, without making a fair attempt to locate the original owner or you're at risk for being charged with theft. 
it seems that finding treasure isn't as luxurious and glamorous as it sounds. Hopefully these stories remind you that treasure lurks around us, even in the most mundane and unexpected places. It seems that even digging around our backyard has the potential to bring unforeseeable blessings into our lives. So what do you make of these unexpected discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community whilst working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.